Okay, operations on functions. So we're doing this for, well, this is the intro, and then tomorrow it's like composition of functions, and, you know, so a couple days on some function stuff. So you're all familiar with those. <coughs> so, uh, actually I'm going to move this frame. <clears throat> Thank you. And they don't have to be F and G, of course, they could be anything. And there could be more than two of them as well. But, you know, we'll start with two, and usually we just start with F and G. Um, we can define some new functions, right? new functions by doing some operations. A little mathematical surgery, right? We can define new functions by adding, subtracting, multiplying, and what else? Dividing. No calculus. Leave that somewhere else. Okay. So, um, given f of x and g of x, we can define the sum f plus g. So this is how it looks notation-wise, right? It's like open parenthesis f plus g at x, and this is what it means. It means take f of x and add g of x. Okay, so notationally, it's f plus g of x, and what you do is you take f of x, you add g of x. We can take the difference. f minus g at x, which is f of x minus g of x. We can take the product. And the product is written f g. Or you might see a dot in between the F and the G as well. And that means F of X times G of X. So here, I'll put the dot here. And lastly, of course, there is division, which is written F over G of X which is f of x over g of x with the proviso that what? Right, so the g of x cannot equal zero, right? So we have to add, we don't have to worry about that when we're adding, subtracting, or multiplying, but we do have to worry about that when we are dividing, right? Because we're not allowed to divide by zero. <clears throat> okay, let's do some examples. Given. So we have a function definition. I'll try and actually read this correctly today so as to avoid uh, 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 and g of x is equal to x minus 1. Then we're basically going to do, you know, all four of these things. Actually, no. We're going to do a couple of things. So we will do um, f plus g of x. And we will do f plus g of 3. Right? So in f plus g of x, we're actually going to define a new function. Right? And in f plus g of 3, we're going to evaluate the sum of the two functions. 
So f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x, which is equal to, and that's just a substitution thing, right? Where I see f of x, we can write 2x squared plus 3x. 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. And where I see g of x, we can write x minus 1. And then we just add, so 2x squared plus 4x minus 6, right, is the new definition of f of x plus g of x. Okay, and we just leave it in this form. We're not going to then go and factor it or anything like that, right? We're just going to leave it in the form 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. Um, f plus g of 3, we can do by doing f of 3 plus g of 3. f of 3 is 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 5 plus 3 minus 1. So all we're doing there is a substitution, right? Wherever we see x, we're writing in a 3. So what do we get? 18 plus 9 minus 5 plus 3 minus 1. So it's at 24. So we get 24. Now we also could have first done f plus g of x, 2x squared plus 4s minus 6, and then simply done this at 3, right? So, you know, or 2 times 3 squared plus 4 times 3 minus 6. So that's 18 plus 12 minus 6, which hopefully not surprisingly, is 24, right? I mean, you should get the same answer. So if you had to do a number of these, you know, if I had to do f plus g of 3 and f plus g of 8 and f plus g of whatever, then I would probably want to get this, right? A simplified form and then do the substitutions in there as opposed to substituting here, right? It'd just it'd be easier to work out. Okay, what else? Let's do f minus g of x. And let's do f minus g of 3. Okay, so same idea, right? f minus g of x is going to be f of x minus g of x. Which is uh, 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Now, because of the minus sign, I'm putting g of x in brackets, right? Because I'm subtracting g of x, that function definition. And so, in order to get the signs correct, okay, I'm going to put that in brackets. So it'll be 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, removing the brackets, minus x plus 1. You know, it doesn't hurt to spend an extra line or two just to get things right. So 2x squared plus 2x minus 4. And if we want f of x minus, so f of 3 minus g of 3. So it's 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 5 minus, and again, I'm going to put brackets down, right, because I know that I'm subtracting um, the expression, so 18 plus 9 minus 5, and this 3 minus will be minus 2, so 27 minus 8, which would be 19. And if we go over here, oh, okay, fine. You insist. Good to see you're awake this morning. I'm yeah, well, apparently I'm not. Uh, and here, 2 times 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 4. So 18 plus 6 minus 4, which is also 20. So when I got a 19 there and a 20 there, I would have had to go, huh? And say, oh, well, something's wrong with one of them, and then go back and figure out which one. Right, I mean, simply knowing that a mistake had been made. Uh, let's continue on in this manner. So we'll do, what do we got? E. Uh, 
f g of x, and we'll do f g of 3. Because I want to be consistent. Okay, so we got 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 times x minus 1. So how many products are we going to get? How many products are we going to get? 6. Multiplying 3 things times 2 things, right? So we're going to get 6 products, which will then collect down likely into, you know, 4 or whatever. Okay, so we get 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 5x plus 5. So 2x cubed plus x squared minus 8x plus 5. Okay, so that's f times g of x. <coughs> We want f times g of 3. So we go. Well, think about it, okay? We've already evaluated f of 3 and g of 3 how many times? So do we have to keep evaluating them each time? So 2 times 3 squared minus, uh, what, 3 times 3? Minus 5 times 3 minus 1. So, what do we get? <coughs> Bless you. And what do you think is going to happen if we put a 3 in here? So it's at 54. Yeah, I don't think that happens in this case. So 68 minus 24. There should be no surprise. So if you had to work out multiples of this, you know, again, you may want a simplified form to work. <clears throat> okay, so uh, what's left? F over g of x. Uh, so that's equal to f of x over g of x, so 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, <coughs> over x minus 1. Or you say, gee, you know, if things work, if things were to work out, then maybe x minus 1 is a factor of this, in which case the other factor would be 2x plus 5. Give me 2x squared minus 2 plus 5, which is plus 3. Oh, look at that. It works out nicely. And what do we need to say? Well, the x is not equal to 1. Right. So x cannot be equal to 1, right? So this is simply equal to 2x plus 5. With the proviso that x is not equal to 1. It's the condition. It's a condition. Okay. Uh, and we could, of course, do f over g of 3, but you know, it's going to work out to, what, 11. Right? And 
here this would be 22 over 2, which is 11. Right. Okay, so. So in, you know, in the assignment, you're going to be doing, when, when you look at the question, it's going to say work out f plus g of x, like do a do f plus g of x, b do f minus g of x, c do f times g of x, and d do f divided by g of x. Okay? And then later questions, we'll just ask for specific parts. So just make sure you're doing all parts of it. Okay, what else? How about, what if we have some rationals? Uh, f of x is 3. <coughs> 3 over x minus 5, and g of x. x over x plus 2. Make sure I got those right. Yeah, I think they're right. So we're going to have a deep line back. There's only like five lines in each one. Now. So with the first example, which was just polynomial functions, adding and subtracting is pretty easy, right? Multiplying and dividing are a little more work. With Radicals, adding and subtracting are going to be a little more work, right? Okay, so let's add. So in this one, we'll just do f plus g of x. I don't know, do you? Okay, so? So x is not equal to 5, and x is not equal to 1. Okay, so looking at the original functions, we should state the non permissible values, right? something we always need to keep in mind, especially if we're using this to then later solve stuff or whatever, right? Okay, so this will be f of x plus g of x. Oh wait, that's a minus. Grant, you wanna do this? Okay. I've got to fail somewhere, guys. Hush! I don't like smart boards. They start very evil. Calculators don't close it. I'm, I'm learning from them now. <laughs> Half mark off every time you don't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but I don't like brackets. That's the correct solution. Uh, really? You're going to do that? Yes. Because we never do that. Why I know, I just realized that. Okay, well, the eraser's there in front of you. You can pick it up. <laughs> so you really don't even need to pick it up. Really yeah, just just, just really utterly good. destroy it, yes. Why does he have a denominator? So are you going to continue? I can't see anything. I forgot suddenly. How did you forget? I don't know. It's a Tuesday morning, okay? It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. It's horrible. All right, pass it to Mona. Okay. I'm going to go and fall asleep now. Good idea. It's okay. First of all, you erase all the things. You erase everything right there. Good start. Good start. Good start. It's just as likely. Back to junior high, right? He's doing the same thing Grant just did. Just well, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, Grant is the same thing. That's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. He just put an extra step in between the other one. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. But he's making it longer. Yeah. Well, longer is not necessarily wronger. Be wrong. <laughs> wrong. Wrong. More wrong than you What did I keep doing? Oh my god. X minus S. What is this? What is this? Wait, why did I do the top? Top. Back to everybody's chance? 
Does it factor and have a factor of x plus 2 is really the question. Yes. 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 And the answer is no. Either this is unsolvable or I think Loki did it wrong. All right. I thought he was going to make a giant right there. <laughs> it, it's not solvable because it's not an equation that can be solved. It's an expression that can be simplified. So something. we're not actually saying, can this be solved? Okay, the only thing we might want to, you know, again, repeat the. Yeah. So it is x squared minus 2x plus 6, as long as x is not 5 or negative 2, right? Um. So again, the last step would have been to see if this factored and if one of the factors were this so we could simplify. You know, if it doesn't, well then, uh, we can leave it like that. Or we could also go, okay. So that would also be an acceptable form, right? All right, let's try one with radicals. And of course, we're using radicals, then what would the most uh, difficult operation be? Or not difficult, but dividing, right? Because then we'll be dividing by radical, and you've got to rationalize the denominator, right? So uh, root x plus 5. So you know, adding is fairly trivial. 2 root x plus root x is 3 root x, you know, plus 1. And, and uh, yeah, multiplying is a little bit of stuff, but if we divide, we're going to have to do some multiplying anyways, right? Okay, so we're going to do f over g of x, which is f of x divided by g of x. And g of x can't equal 0, but it can't equal 0 anyway, so we don't really have to worry about it because we're adding 5 to something which has the lowest value of 0. But x can't be less than what? Less than 0. x can't be less than 0, right? You just can't take any roots. So. <laughs> or another way to say that is x must be greater than or equal to 0, right? Grant, I thought you were going back to sleep. <laughs> I realized I did simplify it. I realized I did After your embarrassing turn at the board. Oh, you simplified it at the end, so it's all good now. I would think that. Uh... Okay, so we have 2 root x minus 4 over root x plus 5. What do we have to do to that? We have to rationalize How do we do that? We have to multiply by root x minus 5. Okay, so to rationalize, we're multiplying by the conjugate binomial, right? Same two terms, opposite sign. So, what do we get up top? Uh, two x. A number. Two x. Uh, two x minus ten root x minus four root x plus one. Let's call that minus fourteen root x. Because we don't need to show all the steps. Okay, plus twenty. Plus, plus 20. twenty. Over. X. x minus 25. So what can't x be? Yeah. So x cannot be 25. And what else do we know about x? Yeah. So it's got to be greater than or equal to 0, but it can't be 25. Okay. Bad things would happen. Like you would be dividing by 0. Yeah, well, it's infinitely bad. Okay. All right, so basically that's it. So we have a lot of time. You should be able to work through all the questions. If it gets too noisy, then all the homework must be shown to me before you walk out of here. If you keep it quiet, then I don't need to see it. I'm going to presume that you will do it. Yes, I know. But if we all